Welcome back. It's Lionel, tech lead and partner at Westport. And in my last video, I talked about why speed and scalability in PHP isn't really so important, but I got such uh, a whole bunch of feedback from you guys through my website and through YouTube that I just had to come out and comment a few things about actually getting some speed improvements. Uh, one of the questions and one of the comments that did come up was, if I use a framework, will that impact my scalability? And the truth and the answer is no. In fact, go ahead and set up a framework. The reason with being that is that in today's world, right, it's been 10 years since frameworks have come up and speed and optimization, no matter what it is, is a key part of any kind of framework development, especially in PHP where it's pretty much the game of thrones, right? Whatever that's not good is probably going out. So um, go ahead, use the, um, use the frameworks because they have built optimization, right? They, that the creators are also, like you, concerned about pushing out some form of performance in their framework. And in fact, you will find that given the amount of features that the framework has and the amount of speed that it can deliver, it's really worth uh, using the framework. It's not much of a trade-off there. But that being said, today I want to talk about one of the major uh, methods, okay? even Let's say you have watched my video and you agree. You don't need optimization, your site's only 10,000 to 30,000, but you just want to know what to do if it hits that point of time, you know? You don't want to start scrambling around trying to boost up your site. And one of the easiest techniques that gets huge amounts of, um, you know, bang for your buck, right? is a technique called caching, okay? Uh, caching your data is, the, the principle is very similar. Imagine if I had a bunch of people, right? A hundred people, and I asked them, okay, what is your average age? I would have to go out, get the collection, put it in, start summing it up, spend all that time. But imagine the second guy comes, right? The next time, another person, and he asks the same question, exactly the same. What's the average age of everybody? Instead of redoing all that work, right, what we can do is just put down that uh, answer in a book or record it down somewhere and I can just give it to him, okay? So can you imagine the amount of savings in terms of running calculations, looking for people, putting together, running operate, uh, you know, mathematical or arithmetic uh, calculations? All I have to do is I've turned it into a static number. I didn't even have to figure out what that number was. It could be anything. It could be a very complex, you know, minimization function or something like that. It doesn't really matter. It's, at the end of the day, I just thought the value there. And that is what in a nutshell is the caching technique, right? Caching is a very underlooked, a very simple, very highly scalable solution to any one of your scaling problems. And one of the best things is that the frameworks, especially Laravel and E2, who I'm familiar with, I can't comment for everything else because I haven't used it. They really have caching built in, especially E2. So if you go onto the site on E2's website, they have a whole section on caching. And caching can make a very intense, slow, very badly done website pretty uh, op optimal because you're changing all this calculation into nothing but static numbers. And there are a couple of techniques in caching that uh, you want to know of, and you can implement them very quickly, especially if you have the framework. So the first technique is, of course, uh, I liked it, it's called the page cache, okay? So don't just cache the data, cache the whole entire page. Now, I see so many people, right, especially when they're dealing with blogs, right, blogs, and they're getting a lot of readership. Uh, at some of the software like WordPress, right, they pull se certain sections of data uh, together to make a web page. For example, the title comes from here, a snippet comes from here, and then your article comes from here. There's some uh, image processing, something like that. That's pretty slow. But if you page cache, it just changes everything into that HTML. Uh, file, you know, you're not even doing any um, service side operations. This is a very useful technique and over very under over um, what you call underlooked, under underused technique uh, of page caching. And in Y2, all you have to do is implement the page cache 
on uh, any page that you want and you the next time instead of the software having to run that calculation it just grabs that page there and then pops it up now caching this way is highly scalable incredibly scalable because there are no operations going on and there's no assets nothing to load it just goes bang in there so that's the first one page cache the second one is data cache okay so since you don't want the whole entire page, maybe you have one page that has two things like uh, current time and average age of uh, the number of people. Now, the data you might want to cache is the average age. And this is only one piece of data. Uh, it could be just a number, you know, 20, 50, whatever it is, that number. This saves a lot of um, storage capacity because all you're caching is a key value. And you'll see uh, techniques being used. You can see this uh, on E2, and they can even implement things like Redis and Memcache to handle those key values. So what is a key value? Like remember I said average age and value. So it's not no more page. It's just these uh, two variables, uh, knowing the key and the value that you're storing. And there are uh, specific softwares that are developed exactly for these purposes, especially Redis and Memcache. They're very high fast, they're in residence access, and they can really handle stuff really, really fast. Now, to compare the two differences, right? Another area is how often you, you hit the data, how often the data changes. So a page, like you may, maybe it doesn't change for one year. You know, you see a blog post, they go up and they, they never change. So you can go ahead with page cache on that and you will never have to worry uh, in the future. Um, value cache could be a lot more faster. It could be something maybe changing in the past uh, five minutes or two minutes or even one minute, 30 seconds, doesn't matter. You might want to be rapidly accessing it and updating it. This could be an example like number of hits to a website, right? Uh, or into the first 1,000. So what happens is it doesn't change until uh, the next thousand, right? So what, how much are you saving? Imagine your site just had 12,000 users, right? And they hit the thing. You, if you didn't use caching, you would have to update your role um, 100 times, uh, 1,000 times uh, every time someone hits the thing, right? But with the caching, with the values not changing, 12 times only, 12,000, 12, very easy. So the next person that comes in, look, it's still gonna be 12. So they just, uh, you know, the numbers are not gonna keep changing. And this is a pretty useful technique. Data cache is very useful, especially for complex uh, MySQL queries, if that's where your bottleneck is. Just run that, uh, those queries in there and the problem will be solved. So this is a very scalable solution. As you can see, you're changing a whole bunch of calculation on one side into just a raw static number. Imagine the amount of server capacity you are saving. So that is the second area, which is data caching. Again, very easy to, uh, to use. Check the documentation. Almost, I think you can get it done in maybe 20 to 30 minutes if you set up Memcache or Redis, or you can even have it in static file. There's nothing wrong with static files, okay? Some of the rapid access files, right, especially if you use a third party, right, which is built for that, you know, uh, S3 or a Dropbox API or one of these things, they're pretty fast um, access. Uh, they have some sort of um, middleware server on top of them that, that make them very rapid. So you can go ahead and put that in there. Don't even worry about what infrastructure because they, their system is set up for that. And you just keep pulling out that data. So the caching technique allows you to get around any kind, of, even if your PHP is badly set up, you can probably use this technique and get home because all we're doing is a whole bunch of queries changed into static uh, variables. So that's the second one. The final one, right, is what we call HTTP caching, okay? This is the one that you probably are really using without knowing on all many of the websites that you're going to. So what is happening is that this, the JavaScript, or what we call the front end assets, right, are very, very heavy. That's usually where the bottleneck is, right? So you have your images, you have your JavaScripts, you have all these things, right? 
And these things can be up to a megabyte, two megabytes uh, large. On the front end, HTTP ca caching is that your browser goes ahead, stores these images, and when you go to the next page, right, you don't have to reload this logo. You don't have to reload the JavaScript. You don't have to, because it's all been cached for you. So this technique uh, can be set up using the server. Uh, you can use HTXS or Nginx to set it up, or you can actually use header calls in your uh, framework. So like you 2 they have got a nice documentation uh, area where they can tell you how to set up your assets. You might want to set up your JavaScript assets to, you know, only one year, check it out. If it's one year, then reload this stuff. So how much are you saving? You are saving an incredible amount of bandwidth and process power. Imagine you going over to the next site. I mean, what are you going to see most of the time? Images, right? These things are big, they're, they're bulky, they're usually, you know, a couple hundred kilobytes of big. If those are cached, the next time, you, the next site you go to, it goes all the way down, you know, no more downloading, no more bandwidth. So that's the first part, right? Second part, right? All your JavaScript assets, same thing, you know, all loaded, all ready to go. So this argument about people saying, oh, you know, this, uh, the style where you have your back end, front end together, versus the JavaScript backend separate, it doesn't really hold water anymore. Most of the times now with caching, you don't even need to reload the page. You know, the, the browser is smart enough to just update the code and then re remash them together. So take a look at caching up your data, using your framework, using the tools available and get your application to the next level. And that's the bottom line because the tech lead said so.